artificial intelligence, or AI, has been integrated into many applications to improve products and services. So how does it work? It collects raw data to train what is known as neural network models. A neural network consists of neurons, a combination of linear and nonlinear functions. The function of neurons AI is to emulate human neurons. After training, a neuron will be activated with respect to the input data. For example, giving a cat's photo as an input will make the neurons responsible for long ears and big eyes. The implementation of AI relies on three different solutions of machine learning. Supervised, unsupervised, and reinforcement learning. Supervised learning requires labeled data which means we give the neural network data and tell it what this data means. This solution has been popular in self-driving cars, where the car can tell if there is another car, human, or a freeway. In contrast to supervised learning, unsupervised learning requires only the raw data. From this, it extracts features and classifies the data with these features. For example, in computer security, logs can be classified as normal or anomaly behavior. Reinforcement learning is more interactive than the other learning techniques. It learns using trial and error. In this solution, the neural network is a part of an agent. Each time the agent takes an action, it gets feedback on whether the action was good or bad and updates the neural network accordingly. A common problem between all of these solutions is that the required raw data may be personal data. Collecting this data and processing it on a centralized server often conflicts with the user's privacy laws, such as EU GDPR and California Consumer Privacy Act. Moreover, in many cases, filtering personal information requires the removal of valuable data that may be needed for training. Federated learning offers a solution to this problem. Uh, for federated learning, it requires edge devices to transmit the trained machine learning parameters to the server training purpose. Instead of collecting the data at a central server, the data are trained where they are, e.g. on smartphones or smart speakers. Then, only the trained neural networks are shared with the central server. The central server then aggregates all models and sends the aggregated model back to the devices. They keep iterating this process until the trained model is similar to the aggregated one. And voila! Not only do we have an extra layer of privacy, but also scalability. However, this doesn't come without cost. Smart devices are usually wireless devices. So when we exchange information over wireless networks, we have two problems. Transmission delay, which will affect the convergence time, and packet losses, which will affect models' accuracy. When the network connection is bad, transmitting the model from some devices to the central server will be slow. So this will affect the time needed for aggregating all models and sharing back to the aggregated model. Additionally, trained models with packet losses are faulty ones. Using them in the aggregated model will decrease its accuracy and will also decrease the convergence rate. One possible way to handle these challenges is to only collect the trained models from devices with good wireless connections. But this shouldn't be the only criteria of selection. Models who have been trained with many data samples should be also given priority to be included in the aggregation model. We can see that if we jointly consider FL parameters and the wireless resource allocation, and the FL can achieve 4% gain in terms of identification accuracy compared to the FL that only optimizes wireless factors. Here we consider the number of training data samples. The idea of federated learning is growing within many technologies such as IoT and fog computing. There is still a lot of work to do here. We can extend our analysis results to training or lazy training methods or any other clustering federated learning algorithms.